Hey everyone, welcome to The Savoring. I'm Jimmy. I'm Richie. And on this video, we're gonna show you how to make the king of all beef ribs, beef dino ribs. Now, dino ribs are short ribs or plate ribs that haven't been cut. You get the whole slab. So these ribs are prime. They make select choice and prime, and these are prime. So most likely when you buy these, they're gonna be in a vacuum pack seal. So when you pull them out, they're gonna have a lot of fat on top of them. And they're gonna have a membrane on the bottom side of the bones. So the bottom side of the bones we're not gonna mess with. We are gonna season them when it's time, but we don't try to cut or trim any of the membrane off the bottom. So on the top here, we're gonna start trimming some of the big bulky fat off of it. So you wanna trim it all the way down to the meat, get all that fat and skin off so that when you apply the seasoning, it can soak into the meat. So on top of this, you're gonna have a little bit of silver skin. They get most of it off, but after you move some of this fat off the top, you're gonna to see some silver skin. You just slide your knife right under the silver skin and kind of hold your blade flat, close to zero degrees, and just go at it and trim it right off. When you get done, you're gonna have a finished product that looks like this, and you're gonna be able to see the marbling in the meat. And you gotta give it a slap. You gotta, oh, you gotta yep, show you gotta, it who's you boss. Slap it, show it who's boss, and get it ready for seasoning. That's right. So we're gonna rub some olive oil on it, we're going to form as a binder so that our rub sticks to it because we're going to really, really rub this down. We're not going to sprinkle it conservatively. We're going to sprinkle it liberally. So we're using a mixture of coarse black pepper, coarse salt, and garlic powder. So when you're seasoning it, we are going to season the back side of the membrane. So we're going to turn it over and we are going to pat this stuff inside. We're going to push it into the meat. We're going to just make a layer and then we're going to flip it on all the sides and we're going to smash this rub right into the meat. We're just every part of the meat is going to be seasoned and then we're going to season it again and again and again. Yeah, you don't want to have any bare spots. No bare spots. With missing you seasoning. This, this is what's going to help form the crust on the outside as it smokes. And when you think it's done, do some more. Okay, so here on the trimmings, the fat trimmings, we're going to season them too. And we're going to put them on a separate bowl and we're going to smoke them also and it's going to render that fat down. So instead of using vinegar or water to base this thing as it dries, we're going to use the fat and it's going to be good because you can't beat some good beef fat. So when you're done rubbing it down, it should look something like this. So we're running the smoker at 250 degrees. Ideally, I like to generally smoke these at 275, but we're gonna try 250 and see what that does, see if it can hold temperature. If not, we may bump it up to 300. Now today we're using a blend of cherry, hickory, and oak. And then we also have about a 20% mixture of hardwood charcoal pellets in there too. I'm gonna put them right on. Stick some probes in there so we can monitor the temps while they cook. Close the lid and let's we'll see what happens. We're going to come back in an hour and see what they look like. So after an hour, our temperature is only running about 241, so it's dropping below the 250 mark. The internal temp is right at 100 degrees. That's what it looks like about an hour through. The fat is starting to render. We don't have a pull of it yet, but it's starting to render off the trimmings. At this point, we're going to go ahead and bump the fire up to 300 so that we'll get a little bit faster cook on it, a little bit more render on the fat. Come back in an hour. So this is what they look like after another hour. Internal temperature is about 155. And they're starting to render down pretty nice. Look, we're starting to get some juice forming there in the bowl from the trimmings. Yep, you can see the meat is starting to peel back from the bones. And look at that fat right there. That is liquid gold right there. You can go ahead and give a little baste to keep them from drying out. And from experience, if you put too much on this and this drips down, this will cause a fire. Yeah, you don't wanna, you don't wanna have some flaming ribs. No, we want a nice crust. We don't want a, a burnt crust. <laughs> right? All right, hour three. See what they look like after three. Mm. So at this point, they were 170 internal temperature, so we're going to go ahead and wrap them in about two layers of pink butcher paper. This is unwaxed butcher paper. All right, so you're going to put it on the corner and you're just going to kind of tuck it, kind of get a good little roll, make it center. Center it up, roll it up. Almost like you're wrapping presents. If you're not good at wrapping presents, you might not be good at this either, but the only good thing is... I don't know. I'm, I'm not good at wrapping presents, and, uh, you know, this is, how, this? this is how my ribs look usually when they're wrapped. Well, very good. All right, so take it just like that, and we're going to stick it back on the pit, and we're going to let it have another hour of cook time. We're going to come back and check them. All right, so it's been another hour. We're going to probe this thing for temperature and see where we're at. And I don't think we're quite where we want to be, so we're going to give it another hour. We're going to see what happens. All right, hour number five. Internal temperature is right at 202, 203 degrees. That's right where we want it. And give it a little bit of a touch there. Get a nice little recoil. Oh, yeah. Yeah. At this point, they've reached the internal temperature that we want, and you want to push that probe in there, and it should feel like just going into soft butter. 
So we're going to rest the ribs about an hour. Some people do 30 minutes. Some people do more than an hour. But we're going to rest them for about an hour. We're going to shut the smoker off. We're going to open that baby up. We're going to leave the lid open for about 10 minutes, let it rest. And then we're going to close the lid and give it the other 50 minutes. And we're going to rest them an hour on the pit. You can use an ice chest. Some people use ice chests. Some people yeah. use microwaves and ovens. And yeah, you can put them in the oven. I usually put mine in the oven a lot of times. And rest uh, it wherever you want. So after an hour, we're going to put them on a plate, bring them in, unwrap them, and see what kind of goodness we got going on right there. I can't wait. All right, here we go. Here's the reveal. Oh, look at the mess. Oh, oh look goodness. at all that juice. Jeez. That is some amazing juice. Oh, wow. I can't wait to see how juicy these things look. Wow, look at this. This is going to be amazing. Look at that. Oh, oh, oh that membrane. See, we left the membrane on there. Had we not done that, the bones probably wouldn't even be in there anymore. Flip it over. Flip it over and see. Look at all that juiciness. Man. That's definitely not a dried out Look rib. at that bark. It's got an amazing bark. Look at that. This the reason we use great. butcher paper instead of foil is so it continues to form bark as it cooks inside the butcher paper. All right, here we go. So we're going to dry this. And we're going to put this on the cutting board, and we're going to cut it. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Look at that. I don't even have to put any effort into That's this. That's cutting like butter. Look at that. It's amazing. All right, let me spread this out. Got a nice smoke oh, ring. Oh, wow. Let me press this down. Oh, look at that. Oh, my <laughs> the goodness. The juice coming out look of that thing is that just crazy. Look at that fat. Wow. This is, this is going to be so good. Look at the smoke ring. Smoke ring's great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's got a, a, an awesome smoke ring. The fat's ring. rendered down. I think we cooked it the perfect time. Look at this bone. Oh, yeah. The bones just pull right out. Look, look at that coming out clean. Oh, man. Wow. This nah, is I messed this up. is great. I don't think you can get any more tender than that. The fat rendered out perfectly. You'll see that marbleization in there, and that's going to... That's going to be some really nice tender meat. All right, well, all right, guys. So here's the ribs. Uh, since we just kind of sliced them up and cut them up, we decided just to bring the whole board over here. So uh, we might as well just go Ready with that. Cut a piece. Yeah, let's cut a piece yeah, off and give these things a try. They smell amazing. Oh yeah. You smell the smoke. You can smell. I don't oh, know. Wow. Just look at you know they have a nice smoke ring. Mm. Look at that. So tender. Mm. I gotta give this a try. Oh my goodness. So rich. So rich. Oh, this is, yeah. Yeah, this these tend to be richer than. Oh, that was perfect. Look at the mm. elasticity. Mm. Mm. That rub really brings bro. out the flavor. Bro. This is bro, this is bro moment right here. Mm. Mm. This is way better than brisket. This is where this is where it's at. You cook one of these, you might not want to make brisket ever again. Never again. Honestly. I don't think I will ever make a brisket again. Because this, this is just next level from... It's actually a little quicker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Easier. Mm -hmm. Way, I think way. It's, I think it's way easier than a brisket. Way more better. More mm -hmm. better. That's what we're going to call it. More better ribs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, more better. More better than brisket. Mm-hmm. One more piece. Yeah, cut another piece off there. Okay. 